Welcome, I'm Antonio Liga and today I'm going to teach you how to play Kabula. We plan on releasing a shorter tutorial with examples soon enough, so stay tuned for that. But in the meanwhile, this is the full comprehensive explanation with everything you need to know. Kabula is a competitive game set in a twisted fantasy world for one to five players. The Kabula itself is the tree of life. While it is placed in the sanctuary, it grants immortality to everybody in the island. Unfortunately, the tree is so powerful that it also opened a gateway to Earth, and a lot of stuff such as social media, plastic waste, is ending up corrupting the island. In the game, players take the role of heroes from our modern world, sucked into the island and competing to steal the Kabula. Of course, the monks would only allow somebody cool in the sanctuary, so before you can steal the Kabula, you need to collect hashtags and become trending in one of your three personalities. Also, there is a Guardian protecting the Kabula, and according to the Guardian you are playing, your experience of the game will change quite a bit. The player who has the Kabula when the Guardian is defeated wins the game. Before playing, you need to set up the board and the shared components, the heroes and the Guardian. First, we place the board in the center of the table, and following the icons, we place the decks around it. Rare items, common items, encounters and dungeons. For the monsters, make sure that the side with the pink frame is up. Place them in the slot for the unspotted monster, then draw three cards for the monsters spotted in the different areas of the map. Then we'll place the exploration pins. The four dungeon pins go in the spaces with the dungeon icon. Make sure that the face showing one is up. Then place the encounter monster pins with the encounter facing up where you see a space with a number equal or lower to the player count. Today I'm assuming that two players are playing with Jessica and Isolde, and we are including Zack as Automa. So the hero count is three. If you set the board for three players, place a pin in every space with a two or a three, and leave the fours and fives empty. There are no spaces with one, because even if you're playing solo, you will use one or more hero Thomas. Finally, place the shared components close to the board. They are the compass dice, aim dice, monster coins, parts, hashtags and noja. Just to note, the hashtags and noja are double-sided, so that you need less tokens. Parts tokens are legs, butt, guts, teeth and brain. Each player chooses a hero and gets their miniature, 5 hero cards, 2 rome tokens and 1 player mat. Three cards are personality cards and are marked with two traits each. You can place them close to your player mat with the colored side up. One card is your starting equipment and the other is your information card. You can read some lore about your hero and then do the setup. Place your miniature where it is specified and remember that the map is color coded in three different areas so it's easier for you to find the locations. Use your dials to mark your maximum health and the current health, and the starting amount of parts. Parts is the currency in the island. Finally, place the parts indicated on your player mat in what is called your Hero Fresh box. Automas are double sided tarot cards, they go on a player mat with their color sided face up, and you follow the instruction to place the mini on the board and set their initial parameters. Finally, choose a Guardian and do the Guardian setup. In this case, I'm using Floppy. Uh, you can place the Guardian mat close to the board, place the Guardian deck on the corresponding slot, read something about the Guardian, and then check the setup instructions. Since there are three heroes, it will have 21 health points, which will mark with this dial. The Kabula we use will have a plus 2 bonus, and now that you can change this disc to match the bonus you need. And the run is going to be arranged following who most recently lit a fire. Of course I'm alone here, but let's assume that the player playing Isolde used a gas stove 3 days ago, but the one playing Jessica lit a candle right before the game. So Jessica goes first and Isolde second. We use the same order for the Familias, and Hero Toma play in any order after the heroes. Guardians have special rules marked here. For Floppy, we need to place one fire token in every dungeon space. It also teaches us how to use fire tokens. This is not relevant right now, so I'll skip it. Uh, for your first game, it is suggested that you use the Water King, as it only has uh, a single, very simple rule. And now we're ready to play. 
Every figure will play their turn following the round order number tracker, which we just call run, and then you start again. Until the Kabul is stolen, the first thing you will do at the beginning of run is always drawing a guardian card. If it shows an alpha icon, it will resolve immediately. If it shows an omega icon, it will resolve when Ron reaches the omega slot, which means players can take action to mitigate whatever the card is about to do. When it is the turn of an Otoma or Wild Monster, you will simply flip a coin and perform the corresponding action, then move on to the next figure in Ron. If it is the turn of a human player instead, you can perform any action if you can pay the resources to trigger them and until one of your actions instructs you to end turn. I will explain you how to perform all of the actions, but first let's have a general overview at how the game flows. Players and other figures will keep playing one turn after the other, and while they do so, they get more items, which allow them more actions, potentially a familio, which allow them more actions on a totally separate turn, and they get hashtags. When you get one hashtag on a personality card, you unlock a bonus action which makes getting other hashtags even easier. Once a hero has three hashtags on the same personality card, they flip it, and now they are trending with that personality. This unlocks a new unique bonus for that hero, and from that point onward, they are free to take the Kabula from the Sanctuary. Whenever they do, the Guardian will attack immediately, and from then on, it will stop to draw cards. Instead, the deck will be placed on the run tracker before the hero will stole the Kabula. Any time it is its turn, it's going to flip two coins and perform the corresponding attack. This is very similar to how monster fights, so I will tell you more very soon. The winner is whoever has the Kabula when the Guardian has been defeated. So the hero with the Kabula will try to kill the Guardian. The heroes without the Kabula will try to kill the hero with the Kabula to steal it and potentially they will try to avoid that the Guardian dies. The Guardian is going to attack pretty much everybody. If nobody has stolen the Kabula when this deck of 10 cards runs out, the Guardian will take it on its own to protect it and will trigger the fight. With this in mind, you need to learn how to move, how to fight, and how to collect those hashtags that will allow you to steal the Kabula. When it's your turn, you're free to perform any of the two actions on your player mat, any actions in a space you occupy on the map, and any action on any of your cards. Most of the actions you're going to perform require you to spend parts. The part cost is marked together with the name of the action. Spending a part means moving it one box towards the right on your player mat, either from fresh to used or from rage to fresh. As you can imagine, a part in rage is more useful than a part in fresh, as it is still fresh after being used once, therefore it can be used twice before it's in use. Some of the actions require you to spend a raging part, and in this case, the part needs to move all the way from rage to used. Used parts cannot be spent any longer, but everybody has this rest action on the player mat, which allows you to redistribute up to 10 parts to your hero fresh box, and if you have a familio, 5 parts to your familio fresh box. This action will end your turn, and as a small note, every action that ends your turn is marked in orange. There is also a funnier way to move parts to the left, and this is called recharge. Anytime you're attacked or pushed, and you either lose health, or lose fards or get a Noja token, you can recharge one part, which means moving it one box to the left. You can choose any part in used or fresh, so if you recharge from fresh, you will get a part in rage. We saw it in the setup that each hero starts with a unique set of parts, but as you go through the game, you will collect more. Just remember that every time you get a new part, it goes to your used box, so you cannot use it straight away. Aside from rest, on your player map you have walk, which allows you to move on the map. The map is made of hexagonal spaces and it's divided between plains and mountains, with mountain regions marked with a brown shade on their inside and this 3D shape which points towards the top. For each legs that you spend, you generate two steps. Each step allows you to cross one white line, so if you're moving from a plane to a plane or from a mountain to a mountain, each step just allows you to move one space. But if you're crossing a river, you need three steps. 
that is fine because uh, walk is not an action that ends your turn and if you have enough legs to spend you can generate as many steps uh, as you want uh, these actions which do not end turn are marked in gray to go from a plane to a mountain you need two steps but if you are going from a mountain to a plane you ignore this extra line because going downhill is easier Many of the actions you're going to perform are going to be combat related. So we'll now explain you all the basic concept of combat. But the game includes also random actions that you can find in items, encounters, in the guardian card. So I'll give you a general rule, which is when you perform an action, it does not end your turn unless it says so. You pay the cost first, and then you solve the effects in order. If something kills you in between steps that you're solving in an action, you don't get to complete it. Combat happens when a figure uses an attack action on another figure, which we call the target of the attack. Most attacks deal damage, which is the sword icon. The target will lose as much health as can block the damage they receive. And they can block damage using a defense action which contains this shield icon, which is called block. All defend actions are marked in blue, and you can use this type of actions only in response to an attack. You will notice that many attacks will ask you to roll aim. In that case, you roll the aim die and check the result. That is the part you hit. Hitting a specific part is important for two reasons. First, you could trigger a special effect in the attack. For example, this attack deals three damage, but if it hits in the teeth, it deals four. But also aim can trigger a passive defense. Passive defense are actions which are not triggered by spending parts, but by the aim of an attack targeting you. If this happens, you do not have to spend any part. The action is paid for by the aim of the attack itself. Each attack can only be defended by a single active action, but in some cases the passive defense may still trigger at the same time. This depends if the active defense says cancel aim or not. If it says cancel aim, this erases all the attack bonuses, but also all the passive defense which were triggered by aim. To recap, active defense depends on the part you spend, and passive defense depends on where you are hit by an attack. Some defenses can be used in both ways, so if you're targeted by an attack and this is not landing where it will trigger the defense, you can still decide to spend a part to defend it in any case. When you use an active defense, you can also defend somebody else, but this only counts if the initial target is on your same space. And you become the new target of the attack, so any spillover damage will hit you. Just pretend you're jumping in front of somebody else to protect them with your shield. There are also attacks which do not deal damage. Instead, they ask you to either spend a resource or lose health. If you cannot spend whatever is required, you are forced to lose health. If you do not spend a resource, which will count as your response action, you could use a defend action as you are still being attacked, so you're allowed to do so. Just notice that this attack does not contain any damage, so any shield in your defense action is not preventing any loss of health. Attacks are usually valid on the same space as the attacker, but you will find actions which say attacks up to three spaces away. Some of them even says attack all, which means that everybody on your space, or if there is a range, everybody in a certain range is the target. All means everybody but you, so you may hit something you didn't intend on hitting. When you attack all, resolve the attack separately for all targets following the run order, including rolling dice multiple times. This matters especially as some of the targets may trigger a defense which has an effect on the flow of the action. There are two extra things which are nausea and push, and then we are done with combat. Some attacks will give you nausea, you can have more than one, and we suggest keeping them close to your health dial. Whenever you lose any amount of health, you will lose one more health for each nausea you have. And you can discard all nausea tokens simply by resting. Push is basically a forced movement of one step. In most cases, it is non-directional, so you roll a compass die, and you see in which direction you should move. If you cross a single line, all is good, you just move there. 
If you're pushed from a plane to a mountain, you are crushed against the rocks, so you do not move, but you lose one health. If you're pushed from a mountain to a plane, you fall down, so you do move, and you still lose one health. If you're pushed through a river or towards the map border, you cannot move, as that would require more than one step, but you get one nausea. These things may happen simultaneously, in that case you get the nausea as a second effect, so you don't lose extra health straight away. Please note that both push and nausea cannot be blocked by the shields in defend actions, that only stops damage. I already said it, but I will repeat it because it's important. Every time you're attacked or pushed and you lose health, parts or get nausea, you can recharge which means one single part moves one box towards the left. You will only recharge one part disregarding if you lose a lot of health or if you blocked most of the damage and so on, but you will recharge multiple times if you are attacked or pushed multiple times, so once per attack or push. To finish this section, let's see what happens when you die. If your current health is zero, you are dead. Good news is that the Kabul is amazing, so you just revive at the Kabula Sanctuary with full health and fully rested. The only thing that you lose is a familiar, which goes back to the wild if you had one. Otherwise, you're dead for good, there's no reviving, and you lost the game. But the game won't take much longer anyway. The same holds for the other figures, so if the Guardian dies before the Kabul has been stolen, they revive at full health. Now that you know how to move and how to fight, I can explain you all the easier stuff about exploring the map. If on your space there is a dungeon pin, you can draw a dungeon card and read the section that matches the number on the pin. Every dungeon level includes some danger, usually this is an attack which works exactly like one of those we described earlier. If you survive, you will get whichever reward is described and flip the pin on the board if that was a level 1, or remove it if it was a level 2. Through level 1 dungeon you always get parts or common items, and on the level 2 you will always get a rare item. Notice that the pin is marked in orange, so your turn will end after you resolve the card. This means you cannot do two levels in a row, but if nobody steals the treasure in the meanwhile, you can of course attempt it during your next turn. If on your space there is an encounter pin, you can choose to flip it and draw an encounter card. Orange pin, this will end your turn as well. Encounter cards offer you a little story, potentially with some reward, and then two options. You choose a single option and resolve it. Options are related to a trait, and if you choose an option that matches one trait in one of your personality cards, you will place the hashtag token on that card. You also get a bonus or effect related to the option. Sometimes you get farts, others a new part, and so on. In general, encounters are very safe, you always get something good, and it's a great way to get hashtags to develop your personality. If you are in a space with a monster pin, you may decide to provoke the local monster. In that case, get the card of the monster spotted in the area you are in and place it in run before you. Place the parts shown here above the card, then swap the monster pin with the figure of the monster. To check what the monster does, you will flip a coin. Each monster has two actions, head or tail. Perform the action, then keep going with your turn. This pin is grey, provoking a monster does not end your turn. The monster will still act first, but then you're free to move on and do whatever you prefer. Since when they spawn, monsters stay on the board and play once per round when it's their turn in run until they are killed. To perform the actions of a wild monster, you need to be familiar with a couple of very simple concepts. If it says move in a random direction, roll the compass die and check the direction. This is not a push, it's a normal movement. So if the direction is not possible for any reason, you just choose the next direction clockwise and so on. Always try to move as much as he was instructed. If he says move towards target, you need to first define a target. This is usually the closest in terms of steps. If there is a draw, check the closest in terms of spaces. And if it's still a draw, the target is the next in run after the monster. If the Kabul has already been stolen, whoever has the Kabul takes priority before the run, but distance is still the first criteria. If it says move towards target but you are already in the same space as one target, of course you skip the movement. 
when heroes or guardians lose health, they mark it on a dial. Instead, monsters lose the parts on their card. When a player attacks a monster, for each HP it loses, the player can choose one of those parts and place it in their used box. If you kill the monster while the Kabul is still in the sanctuary, you can take it as a familio. In that case, place the figure in the Kabula sanctuary where the Kabul is reviving it, take the card and flip it to its familio side. If you have one personality card matching the familio's trait, you get one hashtag on that card. You flip your familio ROM token to mark where the familio is going to play its turns. You mark the familio's health on your dial and you move up to five parts from anywhere on your player mat to the familio fresh box. You can only have one familio at a time, but you can swap with a new one, if so you wish, after you kill a new monster. Familios act independently from heroes and can perform any action on their card, but cannot rest nor interact with the map actions. They can also recharge if they are attacked and lose HP. The used box is in common with the hero, so you can redistribute parts between the two when the hero rests. If another player kills your familio, they can take it as their own, but that's a very mean thing to do. And as a last piece of info, the monsters spotted in the free areas of the map are public knowledge, so you can check which parts they have and if you need them and which traits they have and so on. As you play the game, these exploration pins will flip and get removed, so the board situation will constantly change. There are also actions which are printed on the board so they will always be the same, especially if you are in one of these four city spaces, you will have access to the four actions in the corresponding city corner. Two of these actions do not end your turn and they are selling parts from your player mat for one part each or spending parts to quick move to another city. Two actions end your turn, one is basically resting at an inn, so you spend parts to heal some HP while you rest and the other is shopping. In that case, you will draw the number of cards shown and you can buy as many as you wish if you have enough parts. You cannot sell items you have for the same parts cost. So it is highly encouraged to have items instead of hoarding parts. Actual cost and specific change in each city. For example, in Kabul Arbor is a commercial city. You can shop more cards than in others. You can only shop for rare items in this space here, but we saw that they're always the reward of a second level dungeon. Rare items are always weapons or armors, while common items are divided into weapons, armors, snacks and familiar gears. Weapons allow you new actions that spend parts and you can equip as many as you wish. Snacks are disposable, basically you pay for the action by discarding the card. Armors may include active actions, but mostly they include one passive defense. You cannot equip at once two armors which trigger on the same aim, both for thematic reason, because uh, you couldn't wear two helmets, but also for a mechanical reason, as you cannot trigger two passive defenses at once. So you place whichever is not equipped below the other card, and you can always swap during your turn. Finally, Familio Gears can only be used by Familios. You can equip and unequip them however you like, so you don't lose them if you swap Familio. We're almost done, we just need to learn how to deal with stealing the Kabula. Trending heroes can do that very similarly to how they would provoke a monster. So if you're trending and on the Kabula Sanctuary space, during your turn you can simply place the Kabula on your hero fresh box. This does not end your turn, but the Guardian will activate before you can continue. The Guardian deck will be placed before you in Ron to mark its position on the tracker and you will immediately flip two coins and resolve the corresponding action on the Guardian mat. Target is determined in the exact same way used for wild monsters, so it won't always be the hero who stole the Kabula's positioning on the map as priority. The Kabula can be spent as any part you wish and you also get the Kabula bonus on one numerical value in the action that you trigger. The rest of the rules are the same, you can spend it, recharge it, move it to rage and so on. Wild monsters or familios cannot steal the Kabula but if you stole it with your hero you can give it to your familio to trigger its actions. 
if it is a Guardian or the Automa stealing the Kabula, then they get the Kabula bonus on every attack they perform, which is a bit overpowered, but at least they don't get it on the defense as well, so you can complain only up to a point. There is one last thing I have to tell you, we set up an Automa, but I didn't explain you how to use it. So before the Kabul is stolen, every time it's the Automa's turn, you flip a coin and perform the corresponding action. Some of their actions will give them hashtags. When they have three hashtags, you flip the card. This card will flip also when somebody else steals the Kabula. Now they are in fighting mode. If the Kabula has not been stolen, they'll move up to their maximum movement value towards the Kabula. If they have stolen the Kabula, they will flip a coin to determine their behavior and consider their guardian as their main target, so they will disregard distance and run. If somebody else has the Kabula, they will flip the coin and consider their Kabula owner as their only target for movement and their only target for individual attacks. Unless they are performing an attack which says target all They'll rather not attack at all than attack somebody who doesn't have the Kabula. Basically, they're smarter than the Guardian and they actually try to win. This was not short, but this is basically everything that you need to know. For minor ambiguities, you can look up the keywords in a glossary at the end of the rulebook, but you can just ask me here in the comment section for any unclear parts. Have fun playing Kabula and thanks for watching.